Hey everybody, welcome to uh, to another another episode. And uh, today I'm going to talk to you about a, a couple of things. I'm going to do these uh, videos kind of uh, back to back. Um, the new computer. I was uh, trying out some of those uh, uh, proxy renders. You know where you uh, where you do proxies of the video files, so it's easier to render them. I was just curious about it. I don't have to deal with that now, but I thought that I'd try it out, you know, just to dip my uh, toe in the pool in case I ever needed it in the future or something like that. But uh, I was checking that out. So, you know, I had a render going for about mm, 30 minutes. I was uh, messing around, just kind of tooling around on the, uh, on the internet on my other computer while it was rendering. Kind of looked over it after about 20 minutes and I noticed that the, that the CPU was uh, right around the uh, 82 uh, degrees Celsius. Uh, uh, <laughs> it's just a, a little bit too toasty, you know, so I'm finding that uh, that so far the uh, the 2700 uh, the 2700 X is uh, running a bit warm on the uh, stock cooler. Uh, it's the it's their best, uh, you know, stock cooler, and I was under the impression that uh, that was uh, a pretty decent cooler, and it was going to do um, pretty okay. But I've always put aftermarket coolers in all my computers anyway, and I'm an open air fan. I'm not I'm not a fan of water cooling, uh, but you know that being said, I've never I've never tried it either. I've never tried water cooling. It just doesn't seem like a uh, like a good idea to put water near uh, electronic components. That's just seems like a logical thing to me. So if I can avoid water cooling, I certainly will. Uh, it's and I certainly don't need another uh, hobby. I think a lot of the water cooling stuff people do is uh, is just for the uh, sole purpose of having another hobby. You know, it's just another thing. You know. Um, so anyway, the CPU is running a little bit warmer than than my comfort level, and I I downloaded Cinebench, uh, which I'll show you right here. And this is just a quick uh, benchmark uh, that I ran real quick right here. And I've already run it. It's not anything, um, you know, it's not anything spectacular or anything. So you probably don't need to see it or anything. But uh, it took about five minutes, maybe, maybe less, to uh, to run the stock test. So, um, and that's all I really needed to to get a to get a base uh, for a measurement before we make any changes. That way, we know if we've done anything. But anyway, there's the score, by the way, 3862, in case anybody uh, was curious about that. It's pretty high up the uh, the ladder here. It's pretty all right. But during the test, let me bring this over so you guys can see it. Let's make this bigger. So, oh, that doesn't help at all. It just makes the box bigger. But let's see where we at here. Okay, so here's our package temperatures. Uh, during the test. This is what they currently are. Um, this is what the minimum is. And this is what our max temperature was during the test. So in about five minutes, it got to 74 C, which is 100, 164 degrees. Um, but, you know, you let that run about 20 minutes and we would start to reach the uh, the throttle. We would We would start throttling performance. And I'm not sure at what point the CPU will start throttling performance anyway. Like, I don't know if that's all the way up to 85 degrees or does it start throttling to protect itself before it reaches that. And I would, I'm guessing it probably starts to throttle before that. So, um, <clears throat> so it'd be interesting. So what I did, I did a little research and, you know, on the best uh, coolers that, you know, you can get these days. I've been running a, uh, a Cooler Master 212 Evo is what I've been running for the last four or five years. And they're a budget cooler and they work fantastic for most everything. But for these new CPUs, man, I'm, I'm just I'm just not sure that there's enough there. Uh, I'm sure they'd be OK, but I really want to just not worry about it. You know, because sometimes I'll 
I'll do a, a long video edit and then I'll just render it and I'll just kind of walk away and just leave the computer to render the, you know, my edits and stuff. So I, I, I don't want to worry about it. So I did some research and I found out that basically the, the uh, understanding in the community, the PC building community, is that the Noct Noctua uh, coolers are the best but I don't want to spend that much money on a cooler. Uh, those things are a hundred bucks. So I found another cooler that supposedly, according to the reviews that I can find, uh, performs uh, almost as good, just as good, almost as good right at uh, the performance level. But uh, the thing is, is that every single one of the reviews, the, the cooler was provided for review and um, I'm not saying that any of these guys are lying. I just don't have any experience with them. I, I can't, I don't have enough experience to, to make that judgment. So I, I just decided that <clears throat> it's my best bet. So this is, this is it right here. This is, uh, this is this monster, this behemoth. It's, it's a big, it's a, it's a double tower. Let me pull the, let me pull this out from in the middle, but you can see there's a, there's a fan in the middle. And then you put a fan on on the end, and it's and it's shaped. It's got it's got a cutout to where it you know misses the VRM, and it's supposed to be slightly shallow. You can see this side is much thicker than this side, so it's supposed to miss the RAM on this side to still allow you full access to the RAM. And then the other fan, the second fan, is much narrower than the middle fan. I don't know if you guys can tell that, but the, the end fan is much smaller in thickness and it, you know, it'll kind of sit like this. And also another feature of this cooler is that the fans spin in opposite directions. And I know from building uh, evaporative coolers that that's uh, a thing. That's a real thing. Um, there are um, planes that have dual uh, props that spin in opposite directions to in, to increase the force. So it's it's a real thing. This is the first cooler that I've ever seen that that kind of incorporates that. So what it does is it it'll it'll build a higher static pressure, um, and it should, in theory, uh, give a uh, performance increase. But this thing is a uh, copper, uh, nickel plated copper. Um, and it's, it's, it's pretty impressive looking. I, I mean, it's a pretty impressive looking cooler, man. So I'm going to, uh, install this and we'll come back and rerun the Cinebench, Cinebench, and, uh, see if we get an improvement in cooling. It's not going to be anything scientific or, or, or anything like that. I'm, I'm not trying to do any kind of something like that. I'm just trying to show you this cooler I bought with my own money. So there's no, um, I have no reason to lie to you kind of thing. Um, I'm not sponsored. They didn't give this to me for free. I paid for this. And if it sucks, I'm going to tell you it sucks. Um, got no problem telling you that. So that's kind of what I'm doing here. And, uh, let me install it and I'll get right back to you with the, uh, magic of the internet. Hey everybody, I'm back. I, uh, I installed the cooler and I just want to kind of go over uh, that experience and uh, give you some uh, pro tips if you decide to go with this cooler yourself. But uh, one of the things that happened during the installation was the installation easy. How did it go? Um, the installation I felt was definitely better than um, any cooler I've ever installed as far as aftermarket um, super coolers like that. So, uh, you know, it's not as easy to install as the, as the stock cooler, but it, it wasn't, it wasn't bad at all. I, I decided to go with the method where I installed the center fan first and then put it on the motherboard. And I'm not certain if that's the, the better way to go or, or not. I mean, you can also put the fans on after it's attached to the motherboard. Um, 
I, I think there's pluses and minuses to, to both of those methods. Okay, so let's take a look at how this thing performed. And keep in mind um, that I ran Cinebench uh, with, uh, with just a short run. It was, I mean, it takes this computer like uh, just a few minutes to get through the, the, you know, the standard test on Cinebench. So, um, but, but it just, it just give me a comparison for this. And then later on, I decided, well, this isn't enough time. I need a sustained load to really see how this is going. So uh, before I did anything, I got uh, temperatures uh, idle. Uh, and this is with this cooler, this cooler, this one that everybody says is um, amazing. I think it's an amazing stock cooler, but it's still it's a stock cooler. I mean, it adds value to what you're purchasing. Sure, I think this thing's worth probably like 50 bucks or something. Um, but it's not, um, like you shouldn't expect if you're going to really work your computer hard to think that this is going to do the trick for you. Uh, stock with this, with this cooler, um, it used to idle right around uh, average, uh, around 112 degrees. And I'm doing things in uh, Fahrenheit because I'm in the United States. I don't know why there's so many computer guys doing things in uh, Celsius. So I have to convert everything. Um, I know that they've gotten used to uh, using Celsius in their test and their discussions and everything. But I still, I, I, I'm an American. I still use things in Fahrenheit. Uh, I understand temperature in Fahrenheit. So I'm constantly watching these videos having to convert uh, to Fahrenheit and I uh, I don't like it. <laughs> so I'm going to talk in Fahrenheit and uh, those who live outside of America, like the one or two people who watch my videos outside of America, uh, they can convert the, the temperatures to something they want to see. So anyway, 112 degrees uh, idle, uh, under load, uh, under full load with the Cinebench, uh, we got 164 degrees, 164 degrees. And then when I installed the new cooler, the, the Scythe, Scythe cooler here, the Scythe uh, Fuma 2, Scythe Fuma 2. When I installed this cooler, I got idle temps of 90 degrees. Like this cooler really, really, really does an amazing job uh, at idle, at idle temperatures or slight slight use, surfing the internet, watching YouTube videos, things like that. Wow, this thing really does an amazing job. Can't hear it at all. And then under full load with the same exact settings and everything in Cinebench, I got 134. See, that's, uh, that's, that's a pretty drastic uh, difference in a very short test. So what happened when I ran them under load for, you know, give or take 20 to 30 minutes? Uh, I'm not sure exactly what it was, but what I did was is I took those, uh, if you remember that I was talking earlier about how I had uh, some files I was going to try in Adobe Premiere where I was doing the proxy videos, the, the proxy files, uh, just to try it out, see what it was like. I, I, I did them both uh, with both coolers. Okay, so I'm not sure exactly how long it took to render that, but I'm wanting to say between 20 and 30 minutes because I just did it and walked away. So so let's see here. So under full load rendering, this is very interesting to me. This is very interesting to me. Uh, with the stock cooler, when I came back and was alarmed at my temperatures, like I spoke about earlier, uh, we had 185 degrees. Just that's a little warm for me. Uh, it's a little warmer than, uh, than I'd like to see. And what happens when you have a downdraft cooler like this, and your temperatures are that hot, you're just blowing hot air directly right down onto your components and, and uh, very specifically right onto your video card. So, I mean, this cooler sits in the case exactly like this, and here's the fence. So it's blowing directly onto the backside of the video card. Um, in my opinion, uh, not ideal, but that's just my opinion, you know? Uh, so you, I got 185 degrees and it's just blasting hot air all inside the case. So basically what I'm saying is my video card actually runs hot <laughs> uh, during rendering as well. Not, not like alarmingly hot, but definitely hot. Uh, and with this cooler, the temperatures never went above 134 degrees. It's uh, 
Uh, I find that to be uh, quite amazing. Full load for 20 to 30 minutes, not exactly sure. Um, definitely worth the upgrade. The backside of this cooler, let's see, is there a picture on here that we can, eh. Well, anyway, it's, yeah, probably not gonna see it, but the backside of the cooler is cut out for relief for, uh, for motherboards that have memory on both sides of the CPU. But in my case, just so you know, that cutout was over my memory anyway, even though I only have memory on one side of the CPU. So if you turned it around the other way, it hit the, it hit the AIO. So you can't, so you couldn't do that. You had to flip it around the other way. And that cutout is completely all the way across all of the RAM slot. Probably not a big deal to anybody, but just thought I'd mention that. I do recommend this cooler. It's uh, $60 instead of $90 to $100, so you save some money. And I believe it does perform as, as well as um, a Noctua cooler. I think this cooler looks really cool. It looks really good in the case. So my, my bottom line is, is I would recommend this cooler. And I will put a link in the description to an affiliate link uh, if you want to buy this cooler, I'd appreciate it if you use the link. It, it gives me, uh, you know, a little bit of money, a little few pennies kicked back to me for, you know, for you doing nothing but buying the cooler anyway. If you're going to buy it anyway, uh, please use the links. So that being said, I really like this cooler. I used it all day in a variety of different tasks. And the biggest bonus to this cooler installation is how much the temps lowered on my video card when I'm under a full load in gaming, uh, the cooler on the video card is able to main, maintain about uh, 10 to 15 degrees lower temperature now uh, than it used to when this was blowing hot air directly onto the back of it. So an added bonus and definitely something that a lot of people don't really mention in their uh, videos when they're doing reviews of coolers. And thanks for watching, guys. We'll catch you on the next one. And uh, th thumb up the video if you liked it, if it was helpful in some way. And if you just hate the look of my face, thumb it down. I like those too. Those, uh, those are uh, just as helpful. So talk to you guys later. Catch you on the next one. On any end.